Greetings again, friendly people on YouTube. This is Eldritch, and I'm going to show you some more stuff about Director of Camelot, as I promised. Um, I am right now in Tirnam Bale with my illustrious mentalist by the name of uh, Sauron Oskali. Yes, his name is actually Sauron. Um, and yes, that is actually a, a an Irish name. A very antique Irish name, but an Irish name nonetheless. And I'm just kind of, uh, you know, a role-playing freak when it comes to Hibernia, so... Yeah. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk first and foremost about some of the big differences about Dark Trip Camelot uh, in regards to New Realm Remotes. So I'm just going to swing on my horse here. And... Right, let's let's start with something I can show you without mobs or anything. Namely, this row of symbols here. That's actually my buffs. In Dark of Camelot, buffs work very differently from, say, World of Warcraft, where they split a handful of buffs between pretty much all the classes. You know, every class has like one buff or something. That is not the case in Dark of Camelot. In Dark of Camelot, there's one or two buffing classes in every realm. There's three realms, by the way. And um, those t one or two classes, they have all the buffs in the realm. So um, I'm a mage character, a caster character. That's why I have a self-cast armor factor buff. And I'm a mentalist, so I also have a self-cast and friend single target cast mana regeneration buff. And I have this nifty, um, what's called a damage shield that throws back damage when I get hit. And um, then there's four, basically there's four baseline buffs. That is a shield, which I cast for myself. Then there's a strength buff, a constitution buff, a dexterity buff. And then there's the, what's called spec buffs, which are the special buffs, only um, attainable by the specific buffing class, which would be... Uh, strength and Constitution, Dexterity and Quickness, uh, and Acuity, which is pretty much all the casting stats in the game. Then there's also a another Armor Factor buff that is separate from the Baseline Armor buff, and a Combat Speed buff. And that's pretty much the buffs in the game. Um, buffs are not time-based. These are, because I got them from an NPC, but the ones from that class uh, from that buffing class, they're based on concentration, which you can find under magic. Here, that would be concentration. Um, every time a, a buff class casts a buff, he uses a little bit of concentration. So there's only a maximum number of buffs he can actually cast before he's just out of buffs. And um, those buffs last indefinitely, uh, or until death, or until you zone. So as long as you stay in one zone, those buffs will just persist until you die. Um, there's also some time-based buffs, like my self-shield, for example, is a time-based buff. But the big buffs, as in the ones I explained, those are all based on this concentration thing. Um, another thing that is very different is that in Dark of Camelot there's not really any sp different mob types. There are mobs of different strength, so there are bosses and um, just mobs that are inherently stronger. But you cannot really see if they're elite or anything like that. Because whenever you click on a mob, like this wild crouch, you will get this... It, it will show up in your targeting window. And all the information you get, basically, is just the name with a color and the health bar. And that's it. You don't see their mana, you don't see their endurance or anything, you just see their health and their name. That's all you see. You do see in the combat log, when you click on a mob, you will get a little info, like here it says, you target the wild crouch, you, re uh, you examine the wild crouch, he's neutral towards you. That means that mob will just not attack me until I attack it. Um, they can also be hostile or aggressive. Hostile means it will attack if I attack one of his buddies, or if I just do hostile things near it, then it will just at some point just, you know, attack me. And aggressive is what it sounds like. They will aggro as soon as I get uh, within a certain distance. The colors are kind of similar to how the level um, uh, the, the level numbers in WoW display them. 
as in gray just means it's so far below my level I won't get any experience or loot or anything from that mob. It's just absolutely pointless for me to kill these. Uh, green means it gives a tiny amount of experience because the mob is really really low compared to me. And um, there, it's still not really specific. It's it just it's just an air uh, sort of a range of levels it can be. And uh, the con colors are gray for really 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 low and doesn't do anything. Green for way lower than me and doesn't really give me much, but it still gives loot. Blue is slightly below me, and blue is pretty much a mob color that any character in the game can defeat. Yellow is approximately my level, approximately my strength. And it will also drop loot and give good experience, but some characters, uh, some classes have problems with, ye with yellow mobs. Orange is a bit tougher than me, will give a really good amount of experience. That is actually where solo experience is capped. So if I'm alone and I kill an orange mob, that's as much experience as I can get from one mob. As in, some classes are able to kill orange and some are even able to kill the next con, which is red, which is uh, quite a bit above my character. Some classes can kill reds, but there's no point, because you don't ever get more experience in, than you would for the highest orange mob, if that makes sense. Um, and purple just means that mob is way higher level than you are. And it could be anything from like, um, at level 1 for example, a level 4 mob would be purple already. But at my level it takes them about 10 levels to be purple. But then from, from and I'm level, what am I, level 18? So from level 28 to level pff, 3 million, they would all be purple. And there would be no um, no way for me to find out what level they actually are. So purple always means be really, really careful and only attempt with a bunch of buddies. Um, yes, and that also ties very neatly into the equipment system in the game. Because... In, uh, the equipment system in Dark Shift Camelot is way different from the EverQuest clone WoW and Rift kind of area of games. Because there's no gear spiral in this game. There's no greens or blues or purple items or um, pff, legendaries and rare and epic. and That just doesn't exist. Items just generally have a pool um, that is allocated to stats on the item, basically. And that pool is just completely... Uh, just has nothing to do with their quality. There's artifacts, but artifacts are something different. I'm not gonna really talk about artifacts because it's not that important, but the important thing is that this robe is yellow. My thought walk is robe. But yellow doesn't actually mean anything other than that robe is sort of my level. So on items it's exactly the same as on monsters. Items can go from grey to purple and it just means what level are they in relation to my level. It's also fairly easy to actually calculate because for cloth armor for example the level of the item is always the armor factor. So this uh, Thought Walker's robe has 17 armor that means it is for level is a level 17 item for everything above cloth armor, so leather, studded, reinforced, scale, chain, plate mail, it's always double the level. So a level 17 armor would have 34 armor factor. Um, and that goes for all the pieces, by the way, the, the pants and everything. Everything always has an, an armor equal to the uh, level on cloth and twice on everything else. Uh, as you can see, my pants, for example, are blue. That means they're slightly below my level. I could actually start wearing better stuff. Um, but yeah. Then there's the other things on the item. Um, for example, it says cloth weapon, because that has been bugged forever. Um, it says what the armor factor is, and it tells you the absorb. The higher um, level of armor you wear, it goes from cloth to plate, the more absorb it has. means meaning th the more um, melee damage it will just outright absorb. Um, it also has a weight. Yes, there's weight and encumbrance in this game. Mages have to really look at their inventory and see that they're not, you know, overburdened, because you will get slowed by that. And it also has four other stats in percentages, and that is con for condition, 
uh, Dur for durability, Qua for quality, and Bon for bonus. And basically, condition whenever you take damage on that part of your armor, or for a weapon whenever you use that weapon, as well as for um, things like rings and bracers and stuff. It's um, whenever you use the stats on that thing. So if it has, uh, say, resistances and you get hit, then you use that item and it takes damage. Or if, y if it has acuity for sp uh, spellcasters, it increases your spell damage. So every time you use spells, it damages that item. And um, as the condition goes down, the item is less effective. So it will absorb less damage, it will uh, give less armor factor, Weapons will miss a lot more, and um, so it's really important to constantly repair your items. As you repair your items, the durability goes down, and the durability cannot be repaired. So the condition can go down to up to 70%, and then it's just broken, and you have to repair it. And whenever you repair it, the durability goes down. If durability reaches zero, and then condition reaches 70% again, that item is just done. You can just throw it out, because it is done. Um, that's part of the system though, so it's not like OP or anything, because um, it just means that you have to constantly watch your gear and at some point you will have to replace it. It's not that big of a deal though, because the whole idea of binding equipment does not exist in Dark Drift Camelot. There's no bind on equip or bind on uh, pickup or what have you. I'm lying, some items do have that, but just in general, most items just are not bind on pickup in any way. You can use them for a while, and when you're done using them, you can put them on the, your house merchant and just sell it to, to another player, or just give it to another player for free. Um, that This Thoughtwalker robe, for example, is a different story, it cannot be traded to other players. Reason is, I got this from my trainer. It's a trainer earned item so you know I can't give it away but it doesn't matter because you know uh, s you can also not trade the things you get in the uh, new user journey um, but yeah in the end that's that's not the important stuff because yeah let just believe me when I say this the high level stuff most of it you can trade and you can get money for it and that's pretty fucking awesome and also you can buy replacements, you don't have to go out and get them again. Um, what else is there to talk about? Oh yeah, really important. I said there's no... <coughs> excuse me. I said there's no gear spiral. The reason for that is that in Dark Age of Camelot, um, stats work in a completely different way. There's no... Oh, this item gives 70 to strength? That's obviously better than that, that gives 64 to strength and stuff like that and then you just end up having a character with three billion strength no that's not what it what how it works every stat you have that is <coughs> your strength constitution dexterity quickness intelligence empathy piety charisma and all your resistances and all your other um, stats really they're all hard capped meaning at 70 uh, at, um, at level 50 which is max level in the game you can only ever have plus 75 to any one of these stats and plus 26 to any of your resistances. That is as much as you can have on that stat. Period. Right? There are some exceptions with Trials of Atlantis, but it, it's not important. Just, just, you know, take it this way. Strength only ever plus 75 from items. So if you have... Uh, your equipment gives you 300 strength. That is super, you still only get 75 and you just wasted 225 points of stats. Because they're just, it's useless to you, completely. So basically what you end up doing is, you don't um, go out and you get a great set and then the next raid comes out and you want that set, or, you know, in the PvP sense, you, you do your arena season and you get that set and then the next arena season comes out and you need the new set and no, that's not what it is. You just um, you have a big pool of items in the game because pretty much every item that has come out since the game launched is still useful, some less, some more but in the end you can equ you have a huge pool of items from which you can choose and it's not about you know finding the ones that have the highest strength stats and just combining them 
it's for every class it's about trying to get as many of the stats that are in any way useful to you as close to the cap as you can for everything so let's say this my mentalist right here needs definitely needs constitution definitely needs dexterity and he will need intelligence because that's the casting stat he uses Constitution increases your health and your endurance, so you can run lots more and you take more damage, of course, before you die. Dexterity increases your casting speed. So I, you really want to try to get plus 75 to all three of those. Some would say, hey, but you can sacrifice some constitution because dexterity and intelligence is just blah 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 blah. It doesn't matter, right? The, the point really is, you try to get as many of your stats up as close to the cap as you can. And that's what's called a template. And basically, templates is what it all focuses on in this game. So, that's what... B basically, um, the um, equivalent to the elitist jerks in um, WoW, who focus on best in slot and highest DPS and blah de blah de blah the, uh, um, the correlation to that in Dark Age of Camelot would be template makers. There are seriously people who sit there all day and just build templates like crazy people and just more and more templates and then they're, they actually sell those templates for in-game gold and they make money of that and other people buy them because they're too lazy to make templates and that's all fine and it's part of the economy and it's great. Um, obviously the game is older so you know, all these things sound weird, but once you actually play the game yourself, all this stuff starts making sense. And, um, I know all this, this, this crazy template making and stuff, that can be really daunting, but it's not really that important in the beginning, you know, and, and you will just grow into it. You will, you will start to understand why you need those templates and why certain items are better in templates than others. And, how different items fit together and if you just don't want to bother with all that stuff and you just want to go kill shit in pvp that's fine too and you can just um you know farm some gold and or you know or find someone who is really nice and makes you a template for free and you know you there's just all these possibilities you don't have to get into it if you don't want to while you know in wow you kind of do you know so um yeah, the important thing to remember is that in Dark Age of Camelot, everything you do revolves around the PvP. You don't have to do the PvP, there's a lot of PvE content, but in the end, if you don't really do the PvP, you're gonna miss out on some great fun, because the PvP in this game is amazing. And I'm going to show you that in another video. And basically that's all I have to say for now, and I will tap out with the wonderful background jingle of Tiernambeo. I'm Eldritch, and I will see you next time.